The Chicago Bears have reportedly not ruled out the possibility of Chase Claypool being inactive this week against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, which is crazy. We're going to talk about that. Justin Fields' rankings amongst all quarterbacks in week one and more right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bears Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bears news and content. What's going on, Bears fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bears Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bears related. I'm the host here, Hayes. You guys can follow the channel at Shy Bears Central on every social media platform we happen to be on. With that being said, let's go ahead and get into the content for today. And first up, uh, Matt Eberflus has said that the, the Bears have not ruled out the potential of, of Chase Claypool being inactive for their Week 2 game against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And, you know, with all of Chase Claypool's struggles uh, with blocking specifically, um, just, just, just terrible technique in general, terrible awareness, um, lack of understanding his size and where to look at it. Matt Ibuflu said this uh, when asked about Chase Claypool against the Milwaukee Bucks. He says this, we're looking at all possibilities right now. I'm not going to talk about what's going to be up or down for, for the game right now for obvious reasons. We're looking at all the things to make our team better. Who's going to be up and who's going to be down in terms of the active roster. Listen, that is a really loud statement when it comes to Chase Claypool because we've heard so much positivity around Chase Claypool in training camp, and we didn't see a lick of it in week one. Now, everything isn't on Chase Claypool by any stretch of the imagination, but Chase Claypool's performance left a lot to be desired. And so if we're going to have this team that reportedly, you know, holds everyone accountable for their uh, their performance and it's a constant evaluation period, you know, we're going to we're going to have to look at that as well. And so. Uh, uh, Matt Eberflus was also asked about, uh, I'm sorry, Justin Fields was asked about, uh, you know, Equinami is St. Brown missing Sunday's game. And he said this, he's a great one run blocker, knows the playbook like the back of his hand, great perimeter blocker. He's a leader in the receiver room, but on him being inactive, I don't make those calls. So listen, there is a complete possibility. And I know C-Dub is going to hate it, right? That we could see Chase Claypool inactive and Equinami is St. Brown active for our week two game against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And here's what I'll say. I'm not, you know, I'm not completely down. I'm not going to use one game alone to make me, to inform my opinion on a wide receiver that I was really excited with him proving his doubters wrong coming into the season. But I will say this, it would send a loud message to not only Chase Claypool, but to the roster if Chase Claypool is made inactive because of his performance in week one for week two. And that the fact that he's going to have to work himself back up now, you know, these are all rumors. These are rumblings. These are a lot of non-committal things. But, hey, when it comes down to it, when you look at the, what the Chicago Bears gave up, a 30-second overall pick for Chase Claypool, if he's benched in week two, that's a huge disappointment for the team and for Ryan Poles as, as a whole as well. And I'm sure that they're hoping, as they want all players on this team to succeed, but the fact of the matter is this, you have to look at, at Chase Claypool's performance, which the All-22 is a great asset to be able to go and look and see every player's performance on every down. Chase Claypool left so much to be desired. And, you know, if, if he loses a chance to start and to play because of a week one performance, like I said, it sends a loud message. Now, hopefully he's showing the right things in practice uh, this week as the whole team is. But listen, if it comes down to it, it kind of is what it is when, it, when, it, when, when that's said. Now, as far as to who's going to be throwing to those wide receivers. So, you know, uh, Justin Fields, uh, you know, had a, had, a, had a tough game. Had a tough game. Had some, some nice flashes and some certain things and some decision-making. Um, you know, didn't go downhill. There's even been, like, this report that said that, you know, basically Justin Fields used to actually go downfield in his rookie year, but then kind of stop with, with all the sacks and everything like that. So when you look at the cornerbacks in the NFC, as far as the ranking, right, uh, we got QB rank via this is just via the QB rankings. Justin Fields ranked 13th. 13th. Let's be clear. Out of 16th, 13th, damn near at the bottom. Now, Bryce Young uh ranked pretty low as well with a QB rating of 14.5. We need him to keep playing bad so we get a top pick from them. Uh also Joshua Dobbs with the Cardinals of 21.6. And then you have Justin Fields coming in with 21.6 QBR. That's that's tough, man. That's that's overall tough. If you look at the the leader in the division uh, was Brock Purdy, of course, with a 91.3 QB rate rating. He played really good as well. Uh, you got Matt Stafford, uh, who was number two 
And then you also have Jordan Love, who completely torches coming in at number three via QBR. So, you know, that just kind of puts everything in perspective there. We're going to need Justin Fields as much as other players to play better, right? And so, you know, I just wanted to talk about that. That's an interesting stat that I read, but he was towards the bottom of NFC quarterbacks. Let's hope that he does better next week. Now, uh, Kyler Gordon's injury, uh, it looked bad uh, as far as in that week one matchup. Right now, Matt Eberflus has been noncommittal, even saying, I don't have anything more than that right now. And, uh, you know, they did say that they are confident in, in Joshua Blackwell being able to step up uh, for uh, Kyler Gordon if needed. But uh, right now, I'm sure they're exploring all possibilities, everything around, you know, what uh, Kyler Gordon is going to go through and things like that before they make a decision on if he's going to be active or not. But listen, Kyler Gordon, who came in, uh, like with most players, we've heard a lot of positive stuff around him. But, you know, he performed, you know, Kyler Gordon didn't perform terrible, right? But the injury is the is the biggest thing with him. And, you know, you would hate to see a season that, you know, he was supposed to make that next step really derailed um, by an injury. So, you know, knock on wood, we don't want to see anything like that. We want to, you know, hopefully avoid Kyler Gordon being injured and missing an extended amount of time. But, you know, you never really know. But it does say something that, you know, Matt Eberfus said that they are confident in Josh Blackwell, who showed some things in preseason as well. Uh, you know, so Jalen Johnson said this in regards to it. What gives me confidence is I've seen him do it. I mean, shoot, he played against Aaron Rodgers and the Packers last year, and he did a really good job. He's definitely been out there in fire. He knows how it feels to be out there in a real game, playing amongst some real competition. So I'm looking forward to him going out there, learning that chemistry with the ones, and then playing ball. Uh, Josh Blackwell last year played uh, 15 games. He started one game last season for the Chicago Bears as an undrafted rookie. He had 12 total tackles on defense, right? And he contributed a lot in special teams, right? 11 tackles were on special teams for that. Uh, he also forced a fumble and recovered a fumble in week four last season against the New York Giants. So the fact that he stuck around as an undrafted rookie, which it seems like Ryan Poles does some pretty good things with undrafted rookies, but, you know, that they're confident in him stepping in into that role, and we'll see what it, what comes out of it, right? Overall, I'll say this. The secondary is, is, is better than I think what some people, even me, are giving it credit for, right, even in week one. But, again, like with most facets of this game, we struggled all over the over the field. So, you know, the secondary is one of those things that I'm absolutely looking for improvement on, right? And, you know, hopefully we get that. The, the interior offensive line as well, like, because they haven't didn't have a lot of practices leading up to week one all together with Nate Davis missing most of training camp and things like that. Hopefully uh, more time to gel with them also helps them perform better in week two overall also. So, you know, we'll end up seeing, man, I think, it's going to be an interesting game uh, against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to see what the Bears really learn, right? We're going to hear a lot of good stuff between now and the start of that game. But once the, once the lights are on, once kickoff happens, we're really going to see what that really uh, is like for the Chicago Bears and what they learned from their week one disappointing loss to the Green Bay Packers. It was tough. It was ugly. And, you know, everything is at the end of the day, the Bears didn't get it done. And they didn't show very many flashes of much. I suggest everybody watch the All-22. I know I talked about some of the things to, you know, to pull away from it. But overall, it was a tough game, man. It was a really tough game uh, from the offense, from the defense. Uh, when you look at pro football focuses, uh, uh, grades for our defense, Andrew Billings actually ranked pretty high at 88.1. Eddie Jackson ranked second there with a 78.8. And then you also had Zach Pickens. The, the young defensive tackle rookie there at uh, third with 75.6, and Tyreek Stevenson at number four with 67.2, and then Jalen Johnson right behind him with 66.6, rounding out the top five defensive performers for the Chicago Bears according to pre Pro Football Focus's grade in the in the season opener. We got so much that we need to improve on, and we really hope to see that from the Chicago Bears next week because, listen, it's – I tell you what, the Bucs ain't going to make it easy, man. And hopefully this team starts pointing things in the right direction because right now all the optimism that Bears fans had coming into the season has really gone left. And it's gone left because of the performance. And, you know, we can say a lot about Bears fans reacting or overreacting to one week. It is what it is there. We understand it. It's going to happen. Whether you agree with it or don't, it's going to happen. It's going to be one of the things that, that happens with just football fans or sports fans in general. But it's up to the Chicago Bears to come in and perform much better in week two, and let's hope that they do, man. And, you know, with the the injury to Kyler Gordon, it does worry me a little bit. Um, but overall, you know, a hand injury from a cornerback is a big deal because they have to use their hands a lot, uh, you know, battling with those raw receivers. And let's hope that it, that it comes it comes better. Let's hope that it comes better because I tell you what, it's, it's tough, man. And, and when you get comments from, like, Jaquan Brisker saying, you know, Jordan Love is, is nothing special and things like that, like, 
I, I, I want you to keep that, right? I want you to keep that. You know, Jaquan Brisker saying this. I don't even know how to answer that in regards to being asked about uh, Jordan Love. He's just Jordan Love. Number 10, uh, Packers quarterback, he's nothing special. I love that we're keeping up the rivalry, right? I like that we're keeping our edge. But at the end of the day, listen, you could talk all day. If the performance on the field doesn't match, you just you just giving us noise, right? And I want this team to not be completely down on themselves. I want them to absolutely want to perform better, right? I want them to be able I want them to have a chip on the shoulder. I want them to be disappointed in their performance that they that they gave the, the Bears fans in in your home arena. I want all that to happen. But at the end of the day, it's it's you gotta perform on the football field. And if that performance on the field isn't there, Everything else to me and to many other Bears fans is null and void. There are no excuses in this. You played like absolute dog shit regardless of whatever it is. And that's not to Jaquan Brisk. I'm talking about as a team overall. Let's get it together in week two. We've been preparing. Let's see how we can perform better and see who, who really needs it. And when you look at, for example, Bears players that have to have a better performance in week two, Justin Fields is absolutely at the top of the list. Absolutely at the top of the list. And I would say you also got to talk about the coordinators. They have to perform better as coordinators. We need our offensive line as a whole to ask themselves, what the hell are you doing this for, right? Protect your damn quarterback. It was good to see the scuffle over on the sidelines. It's a good thing to see to really to, to perform that. But listen, you got, you got you, you, outside of just pushing some people around, push some people on the damn football field. Can we get that done, right? That's the type of thing that we need to, and want to see from the Chicago Bears in week two. And, you know, let's hope that we do, man. Let's hope that we do. We're bringing it. All of us, the guys, will all be together for tomorrow's daily episode. So if you got any questions for me, C-Dub, and Bobby, make sure you guys put that in the comment section as well. Be tuned in for that. But that is it for today. Thank you so much for joining another episode of Chicago Bears Central. Make sure you guys are following the show at Shy Bears Central. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns, chicagobearscentralgmail.com. And then lastly, if you want to leave a text message and our voicemail for our mailbag, the number to do so, 773-242-9336. We are the number one spot for everything Chicago Bears related, thanks to you guys. And like we liked in every episode on Chi-Town up, but bear down. Love you guys. Peace, y'all. This has been a presentation of the Break Break Media. Break, 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 break,